Thanks all for your patience. Here we go. Grace and peace to you, friends, and welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Warren. We also welcome New Life Presbyterian Church with us today and this month. I want to share some upcoming events that we have going on. Uh, tomorrow, we celebrate Martin Luther King Day uh, in our country, and the Presbytery of Detroit has put together a worship service for us. I'm going to be sharing that on our Facebook page. Uh, I will share that right after this service, so you can watch it at any time. But if you would like to join me on Zoom at noon, um, we can watch it together. I will send out a link for that um, tomorrow, but you can also use just our January link. We'll just use our January Zoom link for that. Uh, but look for news about that tomorrow in our weekly email. 
we're going to be beginning a weekly mental health check-in, a time just to share uh, in each other's joys and sorrows and all that's happening uh, in our lives and in the world. Uh, beginning this week at, I believe it is at 7 p.m. I think Mary Jo's on here. I think that's right. At 7 p.m., the link is going to be in our um, in our weekly e-news, and you can check it out there. The pew envelopes. If you pledged this year, the envelopes are ready for pickup. You can pick them up uh, today after the service until 12:30, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday when our office administrator Trish is here. Uh, from 10 to 3. Your year-end statements for 2020 are also with those envelopes, and if we, uh, if you need a delivery of those, let us know in the office, and we'd be glad to get those to you one way or another. This Wednesday, we continue in our Bible study. It is not the book of Deuteronomy. It is the book of Acts, <laughs> and we have our Facebook evening prayer on Monday and Wednesday on Facebook at 8 p.m. So friends, let us turn our hearts and minds to worship God. Today, our liturgist is Shayla Hansen from New Life Presbyterian. And Shayla, thank you so much for joining us and uh, for helping us to lead in worship today. And I am wondering if you could share with us something that brings you joy. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you. Okay, great. Um, for, I was just thanking you for the invitation. Um, it was wonderful to just reflect on the, the things that, you know, created joy for me. Um, you know, I have a, a new nephew um, that was very unexpected and a true blessing. Um, you know, we all are thankful for our families. Um, but you know, now I'm I'm really thankful when our when our country has such divisiveness right now, for the brotherly love um, and Christian fellowship that we're experiencing here with with First Church of Warren, um, just the wonderful invitation that we got and all the welcomes in the chat. Um, you know, it's just at a time when we're going through transition. It's just really good to know that we have Christians out there who are who are here for us, even though they didn't know us, you know, knew nothing of us, um, just welcomed us. So that's my moment of joy. Thank you, Shayla. Joy and Christian fellowship. That's great. Thank you so much. I'd invite you to lead us in our call to worship this morning. In this moment, God, the Holy One, whose glory fills the whole earth, call us beside the sea, along ordinary paths in our daily work, God call us. We respond with our whole heart, singing God's praise with shouts of joy. In steadfast love, God fulfills the divine purposes for our life. You can lead us in the prayer of the day as well. Holy one, Earth and heaven reverberate with your glory, and humans and angels alike sing your praises. Open our minds to your breathtaking and joyful work in the world, even as you call us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, our mentor and savior, in whose name we pray, amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is Come Live in the Light. Oh, 
And those of you from New Life Presbyterian, I'm sure recognize that voice. Callie is leading us in our music worship this, this morning. So thank you, Callie, for sharing your gifts with us. Friends, assured that the one who calls us to hear and obey already knows the confessions are heart of our hearts and is ready to forgive. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. God of the universe and creator of all that is, we admit that we fail to be honest about our lives. Sometimes we are deceitful. Other times we judge ourselves harshly and feel unworthy of your call on our lives. Touch us with your grace and dispel our fear that we may arise with joyful spirits to serve you, our true sovereign. Amen. Friends, God knows the hearts of those who seek forgiveness and by grace, you have been saved. In Jesus name, you are forgiven. Your sins are no more. You have been made clean. God strengthens you with freedom through the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. Amen. Shayla, will you lead us in passing the peace? May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. I'd invite you all to, you can unmute yourself if you want for a minute and share a sign sure. of peace or share in the comments as well, uh, a sign of peace. Peace to all. Peace to all. Be with you. Hey, friends. And I'd invite any children who are watching on Facebook or here on Zoom to come a little bit closer for a time with children. And today we are traveling to the Sea of Galilee, which is in the land where Jesus lived. And I had a picture of me at the Sea of Galilee two years ago. It was about two years ago this very week. Um, and a few of us were supposed to be going to this very place next month and we had to cancel our trip we had to postpone it because we're still gonna go um, but we're headed to the sea of galilee today <coughs> and we're gonna hear a story about fishermen on the sea of galilee and one thing that fishermen use i found this in our props closet <laughs> it's actually a lot heavier than it looks but these are some fishing nets right and i have never I, I haven't really gone fishing very much. I know Mr. Glenn likes to fish, but I am not much of a fisher, fisher person. Um, but these nets, the fishermen on the Sea of Galilee would have used these nets to catch fish. And so Jesus was walking along one day along the Sea of Galilee, and he saw these fishermen using these nets to catch fish. And he said, come and follow me, and I will make you fish for people. I will make you fish for people. Isn't that a weird thing to say? That's a, Jesus said some weird stuff and that is a weird thing to say. I wonder, what do you think that means? Make you fish for people. I don't know, Jude and Isaac, do you guys have an idea? You guys are, you guys are acting like, you guys are really good fishermen. Jude and Isaac, do you have an idea of what it means to fish for people? Let's see. Uh to take a fishing rod and hook people by the ear. Yeah, that would be the literal, that would be the literal meaning of fish for people. Hey, Kate, Kate, do you have an idea of what it means to fish for people? Um, save people who are trying or might drown. Save people who might drown. Wow, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, yeah, I think it, it could mean that in like kind of, kind of in a, in a way, right? 
to um, show love and kindness and God's love to people who are hurting, maybe? I don't know. I think Jesus says these things to challenge us, to make us think a lot of times. So we can hold that on our hearts this week, maybe, and think about what it, what is it, what does it look like to fish for people, right? But we hear in this story that these fishermen, after Jesus said, come and follow me, he, the fishermen dropped their nets immediately. They let their nets go and they followed him. I think they were pretty excited to follow him. I think they were filled with a lot of joy when he said, come and follow me, right? So let's, uh, let's pray and we'll keep thinking about what does it mean this week, right? Holy God, we thank you that you call us to do new things, to even do hard things like follow you and to fish for people. Help us to grow in understanding of what that might mean. Help us to show your love and joy, especially this week. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Isaac and Jude. Our anthem today is I Will Come to You or You Are Mine. And our soloist is Callie and the pianist is Adida Jaros. So thank you so much for sharing your gifts with us. We hope you are inspired by this song.
Amen. Thank you so much, Callie and Evita. Shayla, I'd invite you to lead us in our prayer for illumination. God of steadfast love and faithfulness, you have exalted your name and your word above everything. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to hear your word with understanding that in our speech and actions, we may exalt your name above all things. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. Our gospel reading is Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 20, and Shayla's going to read it for us. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat and in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we're going to be talking about the joy of following Jesus. Adam, if you could spotlight me, that would be great. So often on my way home from a day at the church office, I'll give our buildings and grounds elder Glenn McIntyre a call. There's always something to add to Glenn's to-do list, and I am happy to oblige. Because Glenn is Glenn, though, those calls aren't usually just about the bricks and mortar of the church. We often get into theological discussions about faith and the joys and challenges of life lived in community and where God is at in all of it. This past week was no different, and we talked on Monday on the drive home as the McIntyre family was going through some challenging times this week. And Glenn was literally just last week when I was gone, he shared, and he shared with me on Monday uh, something about joy that he wished he had shared with all of you then. So I asked him if he'd be up for sharing it now. Uh, because the good thing about Sundays is they happen on a pretty regular basis. So Glenn, would you like to um, briefly share what you shared with me on Monday? Boom. Um, yeah, what you also didn't share with them, Julie, is that I encourage you to celebrate your sermon uh, series on uh, celebrating joy with the community on our sign out front with your title, Pastor Julie Delazine. Uh, and we talked about how challenging it is to celebrate joy during these challenging times in the community with the pandemic and uh, all of the disruptions in our lives. And then, of course, the personal disruptions that we're having in our own personal lives. And my observation for Julie was that life sends us joy and it sends us sorrow and it sends us joy and it sends us sorrow. Sometimes we have to look for joy. Sorrow will always find us. But throughout life, we get joy and we get sorrow and we get joy and we get sorrow. And because of that, it leaves us on an even keel. If we had nothing but sorrow, I think we'd have a hard time getting our head off the pillow in the morning, even though we need to. And if we had too much joy, 
we would be like the uh, Will Ferrell character in the movie Elf, where it'd be out of control with joy and exuberance. And so because we get both, it leaves us on an even keel to deal with uh, everyday nuances. And so that's what I wanted to share with uh, Julie, and I wanted to share it with my, my community of faith as well. And that's just my observation as, as I go through this journey of faith with you all. Thanks, Thanks for letting me uh, add. Thank you, Glenn. Yes, ma'am. Um, so what Glenn shared about joy and sorrow reminded me of this poem by Khalil Gibran, a Lebanese poet from the early 20th century um, that I discovered in my research on joy this past month. And it is called On Joy and Sorrow. And he writes, then a woman said, speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And the self-same well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. How else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that could hold your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? And is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. I'm gonna share the rest of the poem on our Facebook page with you if you wanna read it. It is a beautiful poem that makes you think deeply. And Glenn and Khalil Gibran are in good company and they're thinking on the relationship between joy and sorrow. In the book of joy, the book by the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu that I've invited you to join me in reading this month or really any other time as you are able. In the book of joy, the authors share that there is no joy without sorrow. That it is in fact in the pain, the suffering that allows us to experience and appreciate the joy. Indeed, they write, the more we turn toward the suffering, our own and others, the more we can turn toward the joy. Which brings me to our scripture for today. If I went fishing like those first disciples, I would indeed be turning towards my own suffering. Fishing does not bring me joy, which might mean Glenn disowning me as his pastor. Now, I do enjoy watching my boys fish and the joy that it brings them but the thought of a day spent fishing myself fills me with sorrow. The worm, the waiting patiently, uh, the handling of the fish, no thank you. I always thought that this passage was curious though and wondered what Jesus was thinking and what the disciples were thinking. Because I thought people who loved, who fished had to really love fishing and find great joy in it. Jesus was calling these men away from something they loved to follow him. It must have been a hard decision, right? And I always felt bad for poor Zebedee, their father, who was left holding the nets of the family, literally and figuratively. And as we journey through Mark's gospel, we hear, we'll hear this again and again. They did it immediately. Mark's favorite word, immediately. They dropped their nets immediately and followed Jesus. I was reading a new commentary, though, this week and discovered that perhaps the disciples' lives as fishermen wasn't as joyful as we might think. I think from our own time and culture, we look on them as strappy entrepreneurs, a family business, a hard working middle-class family who chose the life of fishing on the Sea of Galilee because they love the feeling of the salty wind in their hair and the opportunity to make some money. But the reality is, it is these fishermen who were caught in a net, a system that exploited them and the land and the sea where they lived. You see the fishing industry in Galilee during this time was under the control of Rome. Not one fish could have been taken out of the sea or any body of water without the permission of Caesar, which meant taxes, not just to Caesar, but to all those below him and above the fishermen, Herod, layers of tax collectors and syndicates. 
And texts from outside scripture call fishing one of the most miserable professions of the time because of the real danger to the lives of the fishermen out on the open sea and because of the exploitative nature of fishing that caused them to be amongst the lowest socioeconomic classes. Maybe a more apt comparison, a bit closer to present day, would be the economic system that emerged on former plantations after slavery that exploited African Americans as they leased or worked on others' land and which caused them to remain stuck and in debt. So learning more about the lives of these fishermen this week, I reread this passage and Jesus's invitation and their quick acceptance of it. It makes more sense, no? Khalil Gibran wrote, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. Follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fish for people. Jesus is inviting them into the joyful work of liberation, economic, social, political, and soul liberation, starting with the fishermen themselves and then extending to others, to all people. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus speaks to the depths of their sorrow and through that same sorrow offers them joy. Follow me and I will make you fish for people. The fishermen drop the nets that have held them down and immediately run to the net of love and joy that Jesus offers. Today, we celebrate the installation of our elders and deacons at First Presbyterian Church of Warren. And so it is appropriate to consider once again the story of following Jesus and what it means in our lives. I had my first session meeting with the dedicated elders of New Life on Monday, and we read the scripture together. And I asked them about where they have experienced joy in following Jesus. I found it really profound that most of them shared about a moment or experience where God was able to use their joy and their gifts to speak and lean into someone else's sorrow. And we have experienced a lot of sorrow lately, individually and collectively. As followers of Jesus, as leaders in the church, we have an enormous call and an enormous opportunity to speak joy into sorrow, to use the gifts that we have been given, to use even our own experiences of sorrow to unmask joy. As I read about the tragedy at the Capitol building, two such followers of Jesus stood out to me, both Presbyterians, by the way, both of them having affirmed the same baptismal promises that I will ask us to affirm in a few minutes, both of them having affirmed the same constitutional questions that I will ask the elders and deacons to affirm as well. The first was the newly installed chaplain of the House of Representatives, a Presbyterian minister of word and sacrament, Rear Admiral Margaret Grun Kibben. January 6 was Kibben's third day on the job. In the midst of the chaos inside the Capitol, Kibben prayed with the representatives and their staff. She walked around checking in on those who were under duress, who were struggling as they sheltered in place. And in the midst of the sorrow and chaos of that moment, she felt a confirmation of her call to be there as a chaplain for all those in need in that space. She said, I feel very privileged to be here in this time, and that it is my first week. Later that evening, after the rioters had dispersed, Representative Andy Kim from New Jersey, a Presbyterian ruling elder, was caught by his colleagues in the act of cleaning up the mess. He saw police officers picking things off the ground or the rotunda and asked for a garbage bag to help. It really broke my heart and I just felt compelled to do something. What else could I do, he said. It was one in the morning. He wasn't doing it for the publicity, though one of his colleagues snapped a picture of him as he worked close to the ground. It was for the sake of his servant heart that he plunged into the sorrow of the moment, doing what he felt called to do to pick up 
the pieces. The Dalai Lama and Archbishop shared that the more we turn toward the suffering, our own and others, the more we can turn toward joy. In a world filled with suffering and sorrow, we as followers of Jesus have a call and a joy to take responsibility, to deal with our own sorrow. We as followers of Jesus have a call and a joy to turn towards the suffering of others. When we don't do that, we leave ourselves and the world open to have our own sorrow manipulated. We leave ourselves open to lies, to hate, to despair. But when we are able to drop our nets immediately, drop what binds us and holds us back and follow Jesus courageously into the joy and sorrow of the world, we are rewarded with a sense of purpose a new community, a place in God's kingdom, a heart filled with hope, and a deeper joy. This weekend, we celebrate and remember a saint who was able to do just that, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Take another listen to just this small section of his famous I Have a Dream speech and hear the joy mixed with sorrow. He said, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It's a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. As we install elders and deacons today, may we recommit each one of us to the joy we find in following Jesus, a joy that is grounded in confronting the deep pain of the world, a journey and a calling that proclaims that the kingdom has come, a kingdom of hope, empathy, love, kindness, and joy. May God help make it so. Amen. Our hymn of response is, will you come and follow me? We move to our recognition of Thanksgiving for faithful service and our ordination and installation of ruling elders and deacons. I know we can't call them forward, but I want to call out our uh, deacons and elders who are rotating off. Uh, Sue Carlson, Barb McIntyre, Bill Halstead, Mark Rosman, Vince Fazio, Kevin Smith, and Adam Delazine. I know Mark 
Barb and Mark are in the hospital right now, so we will be praying for them. But I wanted to thank these leaders, especially uh, for having served through a challenging time, for stepping up to those challenges and leading the church with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We thank you so much for your service and we love you. And so I'd invite Darlene, if she is on, Darlene, our clerk of session, I see her coming off mute. Darlene, will you lead us in our prayer of thanksgiving for these faithful leaders? Eternal God, look mercifully upon this church and upon your servants, Sue, Barb, Bill, Mark, Vince, Kevin, and Adam, in particular service we recognize today. We praise you for joys and accomplishments and for your grace, which has nurtured and sustained us. Find us ever closer to one another and draw us nearer to our Lord, Jesus Christ, that we may continue to minister in this community with patience and love, with wisdom and joy, until we come at last with all the saints to the place you have prepared through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We give thanks for you. And uh, friends, if you have uh, Thanksgivings to share in the comments for their service, you are welcome to do so. Uh, we have a tradition on session of kind of roasting those who are going off at our December meeting. And we did just that. And we gave Thanksgiving for them as well. So Darlene, would you um, like to present our new ruling elders and deacons? I would like to call forward Jane Mata, Mac McDougall, and Bob Nowachowski for installation as ruling elders, and Sue Edson, Heidi Grigg, and Zoe Pirowitz for ordination as appropriate and installation as deacons. Thank you. And we are installing everyone and ordaining just Zoe, though we don't have anyone laying on hands of her. So we will do that this summer and properly ordain her as a deacon. Darlene, will you share the sentences of scripture? There are varieties of gifts, but is it the same spirit who gives them? There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as teaching elders. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, the session of Pre First Presbyterian Church of Warren now installs Jane Mata, Mac McDougall, and Bob Nowachowski as ruling elders and ordains as appropriate and installs Sue Edson, Heidi Grigg, and Zoe Pirowitz as deacons. Friends, God calls some to particular forms of ministry God calls us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Let us therefore reaffirm our baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. So friends, I'd invite all of you to respond to this um, and maybe, uh, yeah, you can, you can unmute yourself if you want to respond. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? I do. I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? I will. I do. God's I will. I will. I'd invite the candidates to unmute themselves to um, respond to the constitutional questions. 
Friends, in baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy <clears throat> Spirit, do you? I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? I do. I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? I do and I do. Well. We will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry? working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit, will you? I will. I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world, will you? I will. I will. You promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church, do you? I do. I, I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. I will. To the deacons. I will. <laughs> to the deacons. Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you, deacons? I will. I will. I will. Will you be a, and to the ruling elders, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. I will. Okay, Darlene. Do we, the members of the church, accept as deacons and elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. We do. <laughs> do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? We, we do. do. We do. Okay, friends, all those, um, everyone on here, if you would like to extend a hand of blessing um, to our elders and our newly installed elders and deacons, we'll have our prayer of installation. Um, before we do that, I know there's six of you. If you guys could just say your name and if you're serving as a ruling elder or teaching elder so we can just see you all. Mac McDougal, ruling elder. Susan Edson. Robert Novacheski, ruling elder. Jane Mata, ruling elder. Heidi Gregg Deacon. <laughs> Susan Edson Deacon. Thank you. And um, Zoe Parowich Deacon. Thanks, Zoe. I think we got everyone. Okay, so let's extend a hand of blessing as we pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy, we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We're grateful for ancestors in faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, 
revealing your saving love and all he said and did. Holy God, we pray for all of these deacons and ruling elders. Give them a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. By the gifts of your Holy Spirit, empower them to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give to all your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor and courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church, that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world, sustain your church in ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Friends, you are now deacons and ruling elders ordained to ministries of service and governance in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Amen. I'd invite you to share a jazz hands of welcome or a comment. Um, we thank you so much for your service and for your leadership. And now friends, freely we have received and so freely let us give. I'd invite you to send your offering to 3000 East 12 Mile or to firstofwarren.com slash give. Um, Adam, if you could place that in the comments on Facebook and in the chat, that would be awesome, the link. And I know Bill uh, from New Life will hopefully place the, the link for New Life folks in the chat as well. Shayla, will you lead us in our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving? Holy One, we give you thanks for your generosity to us. Bless these gifts and multiply them for the sake of those in need around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We begin our prayers of this of the people with this prayer by the Martin Luther King, by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Let us listen and watch. Lord, we thank you for your church founded upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray but go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depends on us and not upon you Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together. Pray together.
sing together. And live together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, brown, and yellow, will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and of our God. We pray. Friends, as we pray, as we continue in prayer, I'd invite you to share any prayer requests in the comments, which I've seen that you have begun to do so already. I know there are lots of prayers. Holy God, we pray also that you hear our prayers for peace in the days ahead as we navigate transitions in the nation's leadership. Grant all of our elected leaders wisdom and patience and courage to work together for the common good and to restore a spirit of partnership and joy among us. We pray for all the things that are on our hearts and minds, for the family of Gwen who passed away this week, for New Life Church in their time of transition, for First Presbyterian Church of Warren as we welcome new leadership, for Helen Messina's son, for Mark, Barb, the McFarlands, for Al Brown and the Brown family, for Judy, for Dave who fell and hit his head and is in the hospital, for the safety, prayers for safety in Washington this week. for the family of Ryan White, for Joyce at the village and her sister and relatives who are suffering, for Sheila's godfather, Johnston Cummings, who passed away. Adam, are there any prayer requests on Facebook? I'm not seeing any additional uh, prayers on Facebook. Thank you. Holy God, we lift up all these and all the prayers that are on our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, unmuted. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. 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 Give us our daily Kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'd invite you to mute yourself again as we join in our sending him. Will you let me be your servant?
I'd invite you to stay after the service on Zoom for a time of fellowship. Our New Life group will be meeting together and our deacons will have a meeting as well. Friends, this week, may we go out into the world, a world filled with suffering and sorrow, but also the beauty of God's love. May we go out into the world filled with joy and find joy in following Jesus. But remember, you do not go alone for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with you now and always. Amen.